Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Nathan and today I'm going to be discussing the New York Rangers and whether they should keep or trade Chris Kreider at this year's trade deadline. Now Chris Kreider is one of the biggest and best names on the trade market right now, but as of recent it seems like the New York Rangers are a lot more open to the idea of not just keeping him, but extending him to a multi-year deal. So. When it comes to Chris Kreider, what is in the New York Rangers' best interest, and should they keep him or trade him at this year's deadline, and what could they potentially get back? Watch till the end for all my opinions, and of course, hit that subscribe button if you're new. Now, Chris Kreider isn't just one of the biggest names on this market, but one of the most fascinating ones in my opinion. For the New York Rangers, he's been great, terrible, all in the same year. He got off to a pretty slow start and his shooting percentage was terrible, had terrible luck as well. But even I wasn't defending him because he wasn't playing amazing. But in the last few months or so, he has been absolutely fantastic. In the last 31 games, he's gotten 32 points and has been in an offensive tear. For the New York Rangers, one thing is true, his value is at an all-time high. Now, Chris Kreider was the biggest name on the market before he went on that hot streak. And now, since he's been playing so amazing and he's been such a fit with his Rangers team now, it's put the New York Rangers in a bit of a dilemma, where I think initially they were going to trade him and it was always going to be the case. Now he's played to a point where the New York Rangers might have to keep him. Although his value might be an all-time high, Right now, you can't deny the results that he's had, and he's just been great over the last few games. It's just been to a point where New York is in that position where they almost can't afford to lose him because he's been such a big part of that team. And now the New York Rangers are four points out of a playoff spot and are in the playoff fund. And I'm just saying, Chris Kreider will be pretty good to have in the next couple of months. Now, don't get me wrong. There is a lot of pros and a lot of cons in both trading and keeping Chris Kreider at the same time. But for a New York team that is in the playoff hunt right now, I'm not sure if a trade will actually get done. And we've seen that confirmed over the past few days that the New York Rangers are more open and might be the most likely scenario of keeping Chris Kreider and extending him to a big contract. And at the same time, while I think the New York Rangers are are not there yet to be a Stanley Cup contender. They've played like a great team over the past couple months, and a lot of that has been due to Chris Kreider, Igor Shestorkin, and the whole team playing a lot better. But for the New York Rangers, weighing the pros and cons, it really will decide the future of that franchise and the direction of the franchise, whether they trade or keep Chris Kreider in this case. Because if you want to keep Chris Kreider, which is totally possible, you have a playoff race on your hands, you keep Chris Kreider and he could definitely help you. And I still think he'd be good in the next few years, even though he would start to age. But if you trade Chris Kreider, it means you're going on the rebuild mode, which I think is also very plausible. You keep going with the youth and you get a bunch of assets for Kreider a first rounder, a prospect, and maybe a great NHL player on top of that. I personally wouldn't even say no to that if I were going in that direction, but for the New York Rangers, they will have to decide that. Thankfully, I'm not in that front office because that is a pretty hard decision to make. Now, we'll first start out with the pros in trading Chris Kreider, and I've already mentioned a couple of these throughout this video, but it is worth mentioning the full list. When it comes to trading Chris Kreider, I think there's a lot to gain from that. Even though they are in a playoff race, I think they could pull a St. Louis back in 2017 and still make the playoffs, even though they traded a guy like Kevin Shattenkirk. I think that could be the case, but even with Chris Kreider there, if you do end up trading him, the amount of assets you get back is insane. I mean, you got Blake Coleman out here getting a first round pick on top of a very solid prospect Nolan Foote and I think it would be a lot more than that for a guy like Chris Kreider a first round pick a great prospect maybe even a very good NHL player too to add on top of the New York Rangers system I think that's a situation that New York could definitely get a hand in and again with this amazing draft in 2020 who knows that first round pick could become now, another big pro, I think, to training Chris Kreider is the salary cap. And New York has kind of been strapped in that in the past year. They almost weren't able to sign Tony D'Angelo because they did not have enough money. We've seen guys that are kind of on the older side, Henrik Lundqvist, Mark Stahl, Brandon Smith, were making a ton of money. And, some, and unless you're Henrik Lundqvist, you're usually not playing up to that level. I think a guy like Chris Kreider, yes, would be good now and will probably be good until he's like 32, 33. But after that point, it's kind of like an Eight ball. You're gambling at that point, and I really don't think the New York Rangers can afford to give him seven or eight million dollars and have him just crumble up at age 35. Because at that point, New York is going to be one of the better teams in the league. When you have guys like Capo Caco, Philip Pedel, 
Igor Shostorkin in their primes, Adam Fox, Keanu Miller, Nils Lundqvist, all of those guys are going to be factoring in on that team. And when you have contracts like that weighing you down, it wouldn't be the best option in my opinion. And it really does all depend on what Chris Kreider would get in his new contract if it's $7 million or higher. I think that's what Chris Kreider would ask for and that's what he would get in the open market. To be honest, I would take Chris Kreider, I would, keep, I would keep, personally keep him if he took like $5 million or even $6 million, but I really don't think Chris Kreider is going to go that low for how clutch and how good he's been in the last few months. And he's deserved that payday. He's played like a $7 million player as of late, so you almost can't deny that from him. Although, yes, it would strengthen the playoff chances and would make New York a better team in the now. Again, when this team is really going to contend for a Stanley Cup and all these young guys are coming in their primes, they're going to want a lot of money. And I really am scared that a guy like Chris Kreider would end up being another Mark Stahl situation where he might be decent, but nowhere near the amount of worth he has on that contract. But a good thing in Chris Kreider's case, if they were to sign him for a $7 million deal for like six or years or something, is that he has a lot of values that are pretty hard to replace. When it comes to leadership, when it comes to experience, when it comes to being that rugged, very solid player in the physical side that can also score a bunch of goals and get a lot of points, you usually don't see that too much in the NHL and those guys are very hard to replace. So if they were to re-sign Chris Kreider to a big deal or something like that, at least you have that side the story there and at least he can still be scoring goals at that age I think but again it will start to slow down as that team starts to get a lot younger and a lot better in my opinion and when they get to that prime spot when they're trying to contend for a Stanley Cup I don't think Chris Kreider is going to be worth that dollar value if you trade him right now you have some other team sign him for seven years 7.5 million dollars at least the New York Rangers won't have to deal with those cap struggles and really the only thing that's holding me back from really wanting Chris Kreider on this team full time for the rest of time is again those cap struggles and that's where this business is a business and sometimes you can't afford to keep those kind of guys around for how much they want. I mean, just looking at the guys that will expire this offseason, you have Ryan Strome, Tony D'Angelo alone, who I think combined could be worth up to $10 million on the cap. That's a situation where New York will want every single penny on the dollar to be able to re-sign those guys. And if you get a guy like Chris Kreider and sign him to a crazy extension or something, I really don't see how New York has the cap unless they trade a guy like Henrik Lundqvist and just unload all the big contracts on on this team. And then you go to the deals after the fact. You have so many guys. You have Mika Zminijan coming off the books in three years. That's going to be a situation where New York will have to do a lot of different things. And I really don't think Chris Kreider can afford to stick around. Now, even though I'm really torn on the trade versus stay debate, especially of how good Chris Kreider has been as of late, I still do lean on the trade him side because of the cap struggles that New York would have to face if they keep him and sign him long term. I think, yes, I would dream of having Chris Kreider and not have to pay him anything, but it's how it works. Chris Kreider is a great player and he's going to demand great player money. Not just great player, but elite player money. That's what he deserves and that's what he deserves to get on some other team in my opinion. For the New York Rangers, I think we would love to keep him and that would be fantastic, but I really don't think it's too realistic with how many contracts are coming up and with how many other good players will have to get paid as well. And you trade Chris Kreider now, you could still potentially make the playoffs and you could get so many good assets, a draft that is absolutely stacked. You could get multiple picks, a great prospect, and a good NHL player. To me, that package is perfect for New York. If you get another NHL player that can be somewhat like a Chris Kreider light, you could still have more potential for the now and in the future while trading Chris Kreider and not having to pay him. But for New York, they're in a position where, again, the youth is strong, the playoff hopes are as alive as they've ever been, and they have a pretty realistic shot. Again, I still think they could trade Chris Kreider and potentially make the playoffs. They have a lot of options right now, and I think for New York, there'll be a lot to decide over the next few days. But personally, trading him, I think, will be the best option at this point to get the assets back and to also keep some cap space for the other guys, in my opinion. I think that's vital for New York and for any team in the league to keep as much cap space as possible and to sign minimum league deals, all these different things to keep as much cap. That's what the good teams are doing and that's what I think New York should continue to do. But that'll be it for today, guys. Thanks so much for watching all y'all. If you guys did enjoy this video, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, 
and hit that notification bell if you haven't already. Comment down below your thoughts on the Chris Kreider negotiations, whether you want to trade him or keep him. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And of course, share this video with your friends. Get the Chris Kreider talk going, boys. Get it out to everyone as well. And also click on this card right here to watch all of my NHL trade room videos right in one place. My name is Nathan, and I'll see you all next video or stream. Goodbye.